What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and yes, I am rocking in a rocking chair. It's my kid's rocking chair, surrounded by their toys. Yes, my daughter's obsession with collecting water bottles. I don't know what it is, but it is what it is. But here's a crazy story that I just thought about while sitting here, because it's like where we come from, what we deal with to get where we are. You know, life's a constant struggle, constant challenge, but we, you know, we toughen it out, we get through it, you know. Even, even in the times where you don't think you're going to make it, you don't think you're going to get through, you get through. And that's what you notice about life. If you're a good person, if you do things the right way, you can get through that, self, you know, you know, whatever you're dealing with. But today we're going to talk about my self-defense encounter that I dealt with. And trust me, I, I did not do good in it. Um, that really got me into firearms. And I didn't have a firearm on me at the time. Um, I was a little too young. And I'll explain it to you. So I come from Detroit. I don't live there now, but that's where I used to live. And, you know, it's, it is what it is. But anyway, so... One day I went to my friend's house. This story is insane. This story is crazy. It goes full circle. It's insane. It was I go to my friend's house, calls me, you know, just normal stuff. I'm there. There's a couple other sketchy people there, you know, and then I'm like, you know, we're in Detroit. We're surrounded by sketchy people. It is what it is. And I just didn't like these people, how they're looking at me, stuff like that. And but I thought they're my friend's friend. They're cool. Right. So we're just chilling. It's late at night. All of a sudden, you know, we're just sit standing like right in the entryway of their house. And out of nowhere, one of them just nails me. And there's probably five guys there now. One's my friend. You know, one is another guy that lives with him. And then there's three of his friends that are there. One guy just cracks me, nails me out of nowhere. So I wasn't expecting it. Didn't have adrenaline going. Wasn't in a self-defense mode. Out of nowhere, blindsided, sucker punched. I get hit. Then literally three guys jump on me. And this is a big thing about friends. Person who you thought was your friend completely ignored it. Just stood there. Didn't know what to do. He was almost torn. Like, okay, my friends are beating my other friend. I was getting jumped by three guys. I I had no idea the reason for it. I had no clue what was going on. You know, and here, it's different. If it's one-on-one -on -one and you get sucker punched and hit, it may take a little while to recover and adjust to, like, what's happening. But, you, you know, eventually you'll get your, um, you know, your footing and you'll, you know, you'll, you'll go at it with them. You'll do what you got to do to get out of the situation. When it's three people and all you feel is feet on the back of your head, fists on the back of your head, you're getting kicked in the liver. I mean, just anywhere. You're, you're just free game when you're on the ground. You know, so at that point, you just cover up, you do what you got to do. So then I start to feel them reaching through my pockets, you know, messing with my stuff. And all of a sudden, my keys fall out of my pants. I'm like, oh, my God. One of the guys immediately grabs it. I try to grab it. I'm still getting beat. I I'm a mess at this point. My head is just destroyed. Um, they book it out of the house. I'm chasing after them. They get in my vehicle. I it took me a little while to get up. I get out there as he's putting the keys in the ignition. It wasn't back then with the push start cars. It actually key in the ignition he turns as he's doing that the windows are down i start throwing punches at the driver those three grab my car and it's sad because this vehicle was newer it was supposed to be you know what it, what i was gonna be driving for the next couple of years for the situation i was in and they grab it i'm sitting there messed up like literally just messed up and they take off and i'm like the the feeling of you getting your car stolen it's different if your car is stolen, like you're just sitting on the street and then you wake up and it's gone. You're like, what the heck? But after you just got whooped and your car is stolen and now you're at the play, you know, at the point, like, what do I do? Like the, it's so helpless and you're in a, you know, not the best area and you're, you're just a bloody mess. You're destroyed at that point. I took like a 45 second beating straight, no matter where I covered up, you know, if I covered my head, I'd get kicked in the ribs. You know, if I covered my, you know, my insides that I'd be getting beat in the face, I get kicked in the face. I was, and I'm, I mean, it. I was a mess. So I don't want, don't know what to do. So I call someone to have them come pick me up. I'm going to try and figure out where I'm, what I'm going to do at this point. Go for it. One of the people I was with, not my friend, but someone he lived with thought I was calling the cops. He sucker punches me in the face. I now have, so I have scar tissue on this lip right here. This lip is messed up. I, picture my lip gapped like that. This guy was a massive, massive guy. Very athletic. Nailed me. I mean, I was already beat down. He just split my lip. And of course, you know, what do you do? So I'm like, look, look at my phone right now. It's my friend. So my friend eventually gets there. I'm just sick of these people. I never want to see them again. We're driving around Detroit. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know. What to, I'm going to tell my parents. I, you know, I'm just so confused. I, I don't even know how to feel. I'm messed up right now. Well, we're driving around through the city. And what do we see? We see my vehicle parked about two miles away in, in the middle of a neighborhood. All the windows down. Key in the ignition. They probably thought I was going to call the cops or do something like that. So they just bailed on it. Literally took CDs out of my car. You know, what, a, like a hoodie. Like, they got nothing out of it. 
And, you know, I, I think one of them was probably on drugs or something, but it just shows you, you know, I learned a lot of lessons that day. One is that you need to be strapped. I don't care. I could have died right there. I honestly, when I was down on the ground getting hit the way I was, I thought I was dead. I know that may sound weak or lame or whatever, but honestly, when you're in the situation where you everything's all good, you're just chilling, and the next minute you're on the ground getting kicked in the face, stomped in the face, hit, and you don't know when it's going to stop, you think, you know, you think you're going to die. And that was a situation that was big for me with getting into self-defense, learning stuff outside of just firearms as well. But anyways, so what happened from there, I got my car back. Nothing wrong with it. It was like nothing happened. But, you know, I sat there for a while just like, what in the world just took, what happened? Like, what could I have done differently? And so there's a lot of lessons I took from it. And basically, watch who you're around. Literally, I, the only people I hang out is with my wife and my kids and a couple people here and there. But the couple people that I do spend time with, I, I know them. They're good people. They don't bring other people around. I, and I have no problem with that. I spend most of my time in my house with my family. You know, I, I'd rather have it like that, to be honest. I'm safer. I know they're safe. And plus, that's who I want to spend my time with. But... So definitely the people you're around. Also, you need to have some form of skill or know how to react in a situation because what you realize is these situations never go as planned. It wasn't just I got sucker punched. It was these people that I thought were perfectly fine with me out of nowhere started beating him. He just completely turned and I got whooped. So you got to have, and like I could have been more aware of the situation, not let these people get close to me and stuff, but it's like weird because you're at someone's house who is your friend or you thought was your friend at least. But, um... Yeah, situational awareness is huge. Just noticing like how the people are posturing, how they're acting, how they're responding while you're talking, stuff like that. Also, just places. like I know we're all at different points in our lives. Sometimes you're not living in the best area. But knowing what places to avoid, you know. Um, I definitely had my guard down that day. I got whooped, you know. But I'm here to, you know, live another day and pass this message along and make this video. And, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, and I've had some other encounters too. I had a crazy encounter in Detroit. Um, I'll tell you about this. This is crazy. So actually, you know what? We'll do it in the next video. Sorry, guys. That was a little teaser. Next video, another encounter. Thanks for watching.